Hello, welcome to another Open Geospatial uh, tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add uh, Overture Maps data, uh, such as uh, global buildings, uh, transportation data sets into QGIS with just a couple clicks. And uh, if you have never heard about Overture, uh, you can Google it, uh, Overture Maps. And uh, so it's basically a new uh, um, initiative that um, collects, um, produce a lot of open access data. Uh, very useful, uh, for example, uh, building, transportation, base map, all the rest, uh, things like that. So if you're interested in learning more about uh, Overture Maps, you can just Google it. And uh, so take a look at, for example, uh, introduction or download Overture Maps data. And then it should take you to the website. So the latest release uh, is uh, 2024, September night, uh, 18th. So this is the latest version. And it has produced a lot of uh, data releases in the past. If you want to learn more about what kind of data set they produce, you can click the docs. And then, so here's going to show you some of the data set. And so for today, we want to cover some of these different themes. Uh, primarily, it has five themes. Uh, address, buildings, uh, divisions, uh, I think, uh, places, and also base, and also transportation. So I'm going to show you how to exit this directly within QGIS. And then you can uh, render the entire globe. Uh, of the data set and then you can export data to any vector data format uh, that you like so uh, what you need to do is to go to my uh, github uh, repository so i just created this one yesterday and i've already uh, created those two tutorials on how to add for example 100 plus xyz base map and also 200 plus wms base maps to qgs and i've added a new uh, script here called overture underscore data and if you click this um, um, uh, file you're going to show you a, a, a sample python script and this is the one that you can load into qgs and i'm going to show you how to do that so first you need to click to download this one to your computer so i'm going to download to my downloads uh, directory after that uh, you can open qgs so i'm going to open qgs on my computer here and then you can create a new project so uh, i would recommend uh, first maybe you can add open stream app so uh, let me scroll down to find open stream app uh, where is it open stream app so once you have that, uh, you can open the Python console. So just click this button here. And then just similar to what we did in the previous tutorial, you just open the script. So I'm going to open the Overture script in here. As I mentioned earlier, so it has addresses, base, buildings, division, and also transportation. So for this one, uh, you can add multiple of them the, to the same app, but it might take some time because it's a lot of data layers and uh, it might be pretty slow. So I want to just showcase two data layers including the buildings and also the transportation keep that in mind so for each team here uh it has multiple data layers inside so let me just click this one just let it run first and then you can go through the script so you can specify this is the release in the future if uh over to us release new data set uh you can change this one to whatever the data release so you usually will be the uh, year months and date and after that uh, it's going to load each team. So basically what it's doing is going to show a description. It's adding the data. So just like what we're seeing here, it's actually redone. So you see it only takes a couple seconds. And this one is the UIL. So you're actually uh, requesting the PM tiles. So it basically go to uh, um, Amazon uh, S3 bucket. And then so because they have a file name convention release and also the sim and the PM tiles. So PM tiles is just a single archive that contains the, the vector data. And it's very nice for doing um, large scale uh, visualization of vector data sets. So the itself, this data set that I'm showing here, for example, the building transportation, yeah, I think it's two to 300 gigabyte of data and you can load it easily. So if you zoom in to any location, for example, I'm gonna look at uh, New York here. Uh, it might take some time to load up. Yeah, again, it's a huge data set. And so we're, what we're doing, just open a data set using uh, GDAO OGR. And then it's going to inside look into how many data layers within each each team, and then it's going to load each individual data layer. You don't have to worry about too much about this. It's essentially just okay. Open this file and then see how many data layers. Add them all, and this is uh, what the data looks like. So uh, take a look. So this is in New York. It's very detailed. So it's kind of built on top of OpenStreetMap, but it also uh, incorporates data from uh, third party uh, providers. And it's the most com comprehensive data set, open access data that, that you can get at the global scale at high quality. So let me turn off the transportation. So let's look at just the buildings uh, data layer. So we have two buildings. The first one is just the building. The second one is the building part. So you can imagine um, you have one building inside have multiple parts. 
So sometimes you might have individual polygons and you can select the data layer, for example, here uh, on the left side, and then you can enable the identifier to identify identify features. If you click on any of the features uh, on the right here, it should pop up and show you uh, the uh, basically the attribute table of each individual feature. And don't try to open, uh, right click and open the attribute table. It's going to freeze your um, QGIS. Okay, don't do it because it's like it has, uh, I think, billions of buildings inside. So it's very slow and don't try to change the color. So all I recommend is to open the data set and then just select whatever the uh, area of interest that you like. And then you can export the data as a small data set. Then you can do some, you can change the symbology. So don't try to open the property. Don't try to do anything in here. Uh, again, you, you, it's going to freeze your uh, computer. So again, you can take a look at the attribute. For example, you have uh, one particular interesting one is the building height. And some of them have the name in here. Um, also, they also have the ID. So uh, also the whatever name at the beginning here. So this is very useful if you're starting urban buildings, transportation, something like that, a super useful data set. And let me just select, for example, the first one here, we are looking at the buildings and assume that, okay, now I want to study, um, let me uh, hide the, 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 the Python script. So they say, okay, I want to uh, look in the buildings uh, in the, um, um, New York, okay? So you all you need to do is just simply draw a rectangle somewhere. You can um, export any data set you like. So I can select this as uh, my region of interest. And all these buildings are being highlighted in yellow color. And after that, you can just go here, right click, export. Uh, save selected features as, remember select the second one. The first one is gonna take you a, a long time because it's a couple hundred uh, gigabyte. So if you select this small area and then just, you can export to any data format you like. Um, I would recommend just using the geo package one and then you can select a file name. So here will be NYC um, buildings and select save, click OK. And it might take a couple of seconds, um, depends on internet speed. So at the bottom here, the taskbar, you will see this at the progress, right? 20%. So it's not super um, long. And this is very useful because you can do it, visualize data for any location and then you can export data for anywhere. Without, uh, if you're not familiar with this uh, OpenStreetMap, it might take you a while to like download uh, OpenStreetMap data, but this is very useful because it's global scale. You can do whatever you want. And you can do the same thing for other data layers. Uh, right now, because each sim has multiple data layers, so you cannot export them all at once. You need to do the same thing. For example, you can um, turn on the building part data layer, and then you can also export the data. So once it's done, then you can do whatever, uh, change the symbology, you can do some analysis on that. Because the PM types is just for the visualization. It doesn't really, um, not good for doing analytics um, because it's just getting the type kind of a similar to what you, um, when you visualize OpenStreetMap or uh, Google Map. Okay, so it's almost done. And it's taking, for example, just a couple, maybe 20 seconds. Now we have this NYC building. So I can, let me turn off this data layer. So take a look. So this is be all the buildings that I've just exported. And nice thing, you can now open the attribute table here. Uh, look at all the information contained within this data set. And for example, you have all the building heights, uh, very useful. And yeah, open it and you can change the color. For example, you can open the property and from here you can change to whatever visualization way you want. So now I have this, all these building uh, outlines for the area and you can do it for other data layer. For example, address transportation. So next one, maybe I can show you, for example, let's look at the transportation, uh, the segments. So this again would be just the uh, street um, um, network, all the roads. So again, you can do the same thing. I can select whatever you want and Oh, you need to uh, highlight this data layer first before you can do the selection. So I'm going to select all of this. And then again, you can do the same thing. Export, select features as and NYC uh, rows. Hit enter and OK. <laughs> again, it's going to just download the uh, PM, uh, the data from PM types and then convert to the uh, vector uh, data format we want. So again, well, welcome to customize the uh, the source code. So here, look at, depends on what data, uh, data seems you want. For example, if you need to look at the addresses, uh, you can look at the address. And the base, I think this is the uh, the one takes the longest time because it has lane cover, you have all kind of stuff. So let me show you in here. Um, lane, uh, lane cover, the infrastructure, 
and uh, land use. So this the multiple data layers and it's a lot of complicated polygons inside. So that's why it's taking a long time. And if you're looking at administrative boundaries, uh, you might want the division. So for example, countries, states, uh, different county boundaries. This one is uh, inside the division. So uh, again, just change this one to inside the list in here, remove this and then add whatever theme that you want. It's going to load all the data layers and automatically. So this is a kind of a very handy script that anytime you need some data, just um, open this over to a, a script and then um, you can start uh, visualizing the data, explore and then download whatever data you want again. Right. So now we have this uh, transportation data layer and you can right click, you can open the attribute table. Uh, you can see all the things and then you can start running all kind of a geospatial data uh, analysis uh, on top of that. So this is how you can um, load over to data and uh, export data to any vector data format. As I mentioned earlier, the building uh, data has the, um, the building height. So you can also visualize data in 3D. So previously I have um, created a tutorial. So if you go to, I think, a lead map website, and then uh, you can go to the uh, map libre and then overview so this one actually i also produce a tutorial um so if you go to the maps in here and then over tour so you can actually um visualize the over tour data in 3d so uh, looks like this uh, pretty cool and um, you can zoom in you can zoom out so this is using the same data set that we were uh, using in qgs but because it has the building height attribute so we can actually visualize them in 3d and you can do it for anywhere. Uh, so this is global scale. It's a very uh, um, variable data set. And if you're interested in how this uh, in uh, how this map was created, you can look at this one over to And so this is basically just created using a couple lines of code, three or four lines of code. Uh, just create a map and then just add a base map if you want and then add over to uh, 3D buildings and then add a layer control. And then you have this. You can have 2D building, transportation places, or the space. Uh, divisions uh, very much similar to uh, what we did in QGS but this is just in a Jupyter notebook environment so if you're interested in this um, where you are welcome to try out um, just using the Jupyter notebook uh, environment so hopefully uh, you find this one useful now uh, you don't have to uh, source online uh, trying to find, find data for your project you can just load over to it and if something is already there you can just export the data set and then just do the visualization run whatever data analysis uh, that you need to do Okay, so that's all for this uh, video. I uh, will see you in the next one. Uh, take care. Bye-bye.